Hello, Clyce here, Fantasy Star Online Episode 3 Card Revolution. I would not like to return to the calendar screen, and of course we accept the license, and uh, I did start with a clean memory card, so this is, that's what happens when you run the game for the first time, because it's an online game, so license agreements, they're important. We we're playing the offline game. Story mode. I did know that there was tutorial on the first menu, but I'm not going to do the tutorial. Unless people want me to do the tutorial. I will totally do the tutorial if people think I'm saying the word tutorial not quite enough. Uh, so we get the prologue, and that's why I didn't pre-create my character in advance. Because you got to choose an empty slot to get this. And it it's definitely some stuff flying around. I actually didn't watch this as I was determining what to do in the character creator. I skipped it. I hope this is a worthwhile scene. Um, we're definitely seeing some technology here. They've got spaceships. But I think we already knew that about the Fantasy Star games. Y you, you could kind of guess it from the word star in the title. Okay, humans began to settle among the stars. Of course they did. Around the time the meteor from Regal's star system dived down to planet Coral, the human population was expanding too rapidly beyond the point which Coral herself could no longer bear to search for a new home and seek for a source of the mysterious energy found on the meteor. Dubbed Photon, a Pioneer-class spaceship was built. This humanity planned for a great migration. The Pioneer embarked on her journey. Dot dot dot. Time flows quickly by. Newborns grow into children, children into adults. Likewise, truth becomes rumor, and rumor fades into faint memories. And more dots. Uh, damage over time, it's important in a raid boss. Wait, what? Um, AUW, which I assume is some sort of year marker, 3105, 21 years have gone on, and people want to go to the planet, but they also like to be on spaceships. Um, oh. Okay. Something's going on. Pioneer 2 is still in orbit. And something about the government doesn't want people to go to the planet, I guess. That's what I'm picking up. And we get to choose a class. It's totally meaningless. Um, I decided to be a rocket seal, though. Ranger, android, female. Um, there, there are multiple heads, except all of them have the same face. It's amazing. And um, we can choose different like color palettes. And we can rotate with L and R. And like these ones on the bottom row, they have different models. A little. <laughs> and, I mean, some they have like different patterns. I'm gonna choose this one. Um, proportion, you can like change the height a little and like the width a little. And you know, that looks good. And the name I've picked out is 3609 Battle. Okay. So this is our commander. Uh, the emblem, I think, affects what cards you get, and it's based on your name. They do some math on the letters and other characters in your name, and then, like, take the mod 12 out of it or something, because I think there are 12 different sigils. Uh, mod, meaning uh, mo the modulo operator, it's like dividing by the number and then taking the remainder. Um, so our two options are the hunters and the arcs, and we're taking the hero side, the hunters... So we will be equipping many cards, and card stands for something, and that's why it's written in all caps in the title. And I'm probably going to have to abbreviate the title a lot, because I don't want to write... Well, I guess PSO is a pretty standard ab abbreviation. My titles are going to be long, anyway. Yes. 
I am... No, I, I look like a robot. Oh, you're Pentaglass. You're a chief. Your orders are like law. Okay, so I'll be following your orders and promptly carrying out missions. Oh, take a look around the morgue. Meet up with three team members, and Karen can provide details. Yes, because we don't actually do any battle ourselves. Um, yes, I'm a commander. Oh, simple instructions. We're now officially accepting government's request. We have the following team members. Kranz, Silfer, and Inolis. Um, I think they're a hunter, a ranger, and a force. Um... Okay, so we'll, like, deploy them. And they vary widely in knowledge and skills in card technology. Ah, oh, yes. Assign each individual an appropriate card deck. And then guide them skillfully. Oh, and we'll receive orders here. So report back when we complete missions, and they look forward to working with us. Um, uh, talking to people is important. I think some of the times they give you cards. Oh, my team's waiting in the central command room. And we can, like, pull up stuff and do, like, card info. And I have, like, 65 cards already. <laughs> um. Yep, it is me. I'm the new commander. Oh, someone else is just talking about me. I'm a robot. Nice to meet you. Oh, my skill could help decide the battle. Oh. Okay. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, you need more data. Okay. More data is required. I can center the camera behind me with L. It's only useful in the lobby. Oh, you look mage -y. The force is the mage class. I must be the new commander. Yes, you're right. You are a force. Okay. Techniques. That's the name for spells. They're, they're techniques. And she is indeed my girl. I would like to know about card technology. It refers to the ability to store data in a thin memory unit the size of a card. And store that data back into the real world at your will. So they're like Pokeballs. But with weapons. Okay, the arcs are bad. And they're increasing in activity. Okay, resist the tyranny of the principal government. Halt the government's rampant overdevelopment of red goal. Okay. Right. So, Pioneer 2 needs Unified. That's like the immigration ship. Oh, and you are... Oh, wait, I think she's the hunter? Um, you only have a little bit of battle experience, and you'll try not to be a hindrance. I think... I think this guy is a male ranger over here. And I think that's a female hunter. Um, I guess I scrolled through the classes kind of quickly, but they do have distinctive looks to them. I am the new commander. I, I'm probably pretty good. Oh, and you have some side quests, I guess. And you don't have them yet. <laughs> okay. Send orders from there. I choose map quest. And I can look at the rules for each battle, because battles have rules. Alright. Alright. So, what are my current jobs? Nothing! Excellent. So, I guess I need to talk to more people. Maybe go back and talk to Sir the Duder, the Chief. Oh. Okay. Uh. I would like to actually adjust my deck. Um. Oh. Okay, you are apparently busy. Uh, these? Oh, okay. Um, I don't think I really have any operations there that are useful. How do I make a deck? I assume I actually already have like three pre-made ones. Or maybe one pre-made one that any main character can... use. Oh. I would need another person to trade. Yes, there is no point to trading with yourself. I can't seem to use the... Hmm. Okay, but yeah, we've got like sabers and big swords and other swords. 
Daggers. I still don't think the tutorial would have been valuable, because it tells you about, like, types of cards. Ah! I will edit the deck, because I want to see what's in it. Oh yeah, we have a default hunter deck, and a default um, dark side deck. I guess H was for hero. Yeah, I can't edit this deck while I'm on the hero side. It says right there, obviously. In obvious text. Okay, so our summary is we've got... Nine melee weapons, three guns, zero wands, four defensive actions, and, um... Oh, no, not defensive actions. Four shields. And one, I don't know. And then we have five melee actions, five defensive actions, and five spell actions. Or maybe not melee, but weapon skill. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we can look in here. Um... Oh, a mag! That's the other thing. Okay. Yeah. And we've got, like, spells and defensive actions. We can get more card info. Okay. And I'll talk more about the cards as we actually get playing. Assist. I don't actually remember what that card type is. Okay. But, I mean, I'm going to use that default deck first, because why not? What's this room? I think this is where you warp in when you finish a mission. Oh, you're taking care of security. That, that's nice of you. Or, you know, probably what you were hired to do. So, after, like, 12 minutes, we're still not actually in a mission. Because, you know, this game, amazing start. Oh, that's locked. I'm trying to find my way back to the chief. What? Oh, I, I don't actually need help. And, but he will give me one-on-one -on -one training if I need it. Oh, I've talked to you. Okay. Right. So, she's nervous about card usage, because they're new. New weapons. <laughs> new, not particularly durable weapons, I might add. Okay. Hey. Yeah, I'm done meeting the team. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Um... Yes. Okay. I... Yeah? Oh. I already visited that. I made sure, yeah. Fossil Find 1 has been added. Oh, one more thing. Okay. Highly confidential. I will not leak it to the public on YouTube. <sighs> Alright, so... Let's go out on our first test-like mission. I should have probably actually looked at the properties of my hero card. And I... I'm apparently getting interrupted. Yo! It, it's my first battle, yes. I've never before played this game. Or at least it has been a while, actually. Okay. You don't know how teleporters work. Okay. So we hit the button and then it buttons. Oh, it's an entry counter. Let's you dispatch your team on missions. It's meant for card battles. You can't dispatch your team without making a deck. <laughs> Certain members might not be available sometimes. If you want to build a deck, you should build a deck. I've been there. Yes. Okay, orders will be registered here. And then you go to the machine and you'll be like, I want to go here. <laughs> you won't mind if I forget one or two things. Sure. I'll try it out and I'll send a dispatch order. Probably. Oh, how about deploying you? Maybe the heroes aren't attached to the decks. Quest registration complete. Okay. Map slash quest. We can pick our only stage. And the map 
doesn't appear particularly complicated. Um, yeah, go for a fossil. Uh, rule settings. Um, so yeah, you can see that there are quite a variety of rules that can possibly be set up. I'll go over them as they actually affect our battles. This is pretty much the standard stuff. Besides this minimum roll, that's probably why it's lit up. Alright. Yeah, rules change is made. Uh, deck selection. Character selection. Default H. Okay. Uh, yeah, send help to the research team. So I'm quite possibly not sending out the guy that requested I send him out, but I'll send him out eventually. I want to try out all the commanders. Alright, so we've got Silver there, commanded by me. We have some robot there, commanded by not me. We're rolling to see who goes first. And I do not go first. Okay. Um. Uh, yes, I would like a new hand. I wanted to start with a weapon and a barrier. Okay, so they rolled double fours. And as an Arcs character, they place monsters. And they spent all their action points placing stuff. Because you draw from a single pool of stuff for um, both doing things and setting cards, and for now I'm just gonna set up cards. Uh, I don't have any points with which I may move. And you always draw back up to five cards at the end of a turn. I hope they like... Oh wait, the claw is already there, okay. Alright, so I can use my defense points, which were rolled alongside my attack to play defense action cards. Um, since Claw is attacking with, I believe it's normal attack, and so um, uh, it has the red attribute you can see at the top of the card. I can block with anything that has a red, so dodge is either red or yellow, and guard is red only. And the damage incoming is 2, so I'm going to use dodge because it blocks 2 damage. And so, says miss because I took no damage. Yeah, the HP plus whatever. Um, I'm just going to let this attack go through. And it'll hit my... Oh, yeah, there's a chance to paralyze. And I didn't get paralyzed, and my shield took the damage because... He has to destroy all my shields before he can attack my weapons, and he has to attack my weapons before he can attack me directly. However, I do lose a, um, a hit point any time something I have equipped breaks. Uh, let's see. So I think the slicer can only actually hit... Um, so I can move up to two tiles away because that's my hero's movement range, but it also takes an action point per tile I move. So I'm gonna stand here and fight. I can attack once per weapon I have set. Um, oh, right. Um, so I believe... Uh, yeah, let's attack the poison lily. Oh, I have anti-abnormality. Or no, they do, I think. I don't know. I should really be inspecting these cards better. Alright, I killed a lily and I got some bonus gauge. The bonus gauge will add on to um, any future rolls. 
once it actually reaches a full one. You get bonus by destroying cards. So when my weapons explode or when I defeat their monsters. Well, and also when my shields explode. Okay, so they're moving. They rolled a six and didn't place anything. They must not have monsters in their hand. Defense. Uh, yeah, I might as well defend. Using a guard, guarding the attack. And I reduced its damage below zero. Yeah. Oh. And they're actually attacking me as well. Um, they don't have a weapon equipped. Um, but both heroes and arcs can attack with no weapon. You have an attack that's based on your hero. They're a ranger, so they have a ranged attack when they have no weapon. I would have a melee attack when I had no weapon because I'm a, a hunter. Uh, I actually don't want to set anything. I'm gonna move over here. Action. Oh, I can cast Slash. It'll make me deal an extra two damage. Partisan adds one on my hero's base damage. And I, my other weapon can't even hit anyone at the moment. Ah, but I can slash with either weapon. The Partisan has more damage, so I'm going to slash with the Partisan. Um, you'll notice that Slash has a um, red icon to the left. Or, not red icon, but red bar. That means it can be used with any weapon that has a red thing at the right edge. So you line up the reds, and this will deal more damage. You know, I'm just I'm attacking the hero directly, because why not? Arcs are really in trouble if you get your hero next to them. Um, I'll throw my uh, throw away my weapons because I have three weapons or no, I only have two, but it's already a pretty good number because you tend to want to like move still, or you like use action cards, and I don't know, you just you can't support having that many weapons out at once, and I wanted to get more defensive actions if I could. Um, the arcs do have rules on where they're allowed to summon monsters. I think it's based on both a distance from them and sometimes a distance from like their back edge of the arena. Maybe not. Maybe I'm making stuff up. So reduction, it reduces damage by half. I think I inspected this card earlier, but I didn't really read it out loud. I don't know if it rounds up or down. It apparently, the remaining damage rounds down. Alright, and our shield's being broken here by their basic attack and they got three bonus gauge and nothing else that they have here can hit me Change. nice, ah, nice. six so let's see the mag it's just a support thing increases my AP and TP and let's see if I set the mag and the daggers then I can hit them with both um, you'll notice that weapons don't have very many hit points compared to shields, and so if you're down to just weapons... Oh, it attacks twice. Excellent. Um, oh, and this cannot use any attack actions. Oh, yeah, so it doesn't have anything on the right edge of the card. Um, yeah, if you have no shield as a um, uh, hunt hero side character, that tends to be trouble. Um... Yeah, if we look at my base stats, I've got 14 hit points, 3 attack power, 1 tech power, and 2 movement points. Um, I do not want to move, I'm already next to them. Um, oh, I don't have any wands equipped, so I can't cast Barda. I think if I had nothing equipped, I could actually cast Barda, but you can't use your hero's attack when you have weapons. And the mag doesn't have an attack, it just adds to my stats. So what's this? Oh, high cost slayer. Okay. 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 So I think double strike will deal the most damage. And I might as well just. Oh. That yeah, partisan will also hit them. And I might as well attack the claw again in case this doesn't finish them off because they might have defense cards. Ah! But my base damage plus the mag plus the double attack uh, makes me win. I got a C plus. 
I should have maybe done the dagger attack last to try and kill more creatures. Might have improved my rank. Alright, we've got our results screen. And I got some experience. Yeah, so we, we definitely have some stats there. Took eight turns. Yeah. I think if I'd gotten paralyzed, I would still be able to act. I think it, like, lowers your movement points. Uh, yeah, so there are all kinds of statistics, and we don't really care too much about them. We get some cards. We select a pack arbitrarily, and I'm going to go with the green ones. Um... Okay, so we got a monster card that we can play if we ever do the other story. We got another Partisan. Oh! Disca of Liberator. I wish I could actually inspect these. Foey, that's a fireball spell. Uh, spells, they use your tech power. And... Yeah. Oh, now we can inspect them. Disca of Liberator. So it has that weird attack range where it hits, like, not quite a T. It's missing the, all the spaces next to you. Uh, sword type. Acid effect. Roll a six or higher to put acid. No effect against story characters. And acid is basically poison, apparently. And A attack. Works on... Oh wait, this is a skill card. Uh, native Slayer. Uh, inflicts 1.5x damage against native creatures. But it doesn't actually add any base damage. Uh, I'm not sure that would be worth it for a cost of two. By the way, the dots are the cost. I never pointed that out, but that's true. Um, and I assume this is Sword Guard. Uh, yeah. Blocks an attack by a sword. Uh, even if the user of this card is a sword type item. So... The HP plus zero, it doesn't actually block any damage unless it's a sword, in which case it blocks it entirely. Oh yeah, the research team is safe and sound, and we're saving the game automatically. So, I mean, that maybe wasn't the most interesting battle, but that's a lot what the game is like, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, there will be more strategy involved in decks and stuff. I did pass the test. The chief called for me. Uh, oh, we're giving him a full mission report. Yeah, good work. I am pretty good. I'm decent. I got a C+. Oh, the team's talent too. You'll have more work in the future. Oh, the next job's an emergency operation, and Karen has the details. Who's Karen? Oh, wait. We got the quest. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, you're explaining the mission. Building an intraplanetary high-speed network. And the arc's broken into the network, so we gotta do something about it. Okay. Putting an end to the sabotage. Um, I think before I end things off, I'm gonna inspect the different hero cards that I have. And then we end things off. Maybe set up my deck to use a different hero. <laughs> I almost said champion for some reason. Okay, so we gotta find the person behind this counter. So that's how this counter works. Uh, I will edit the deck. Um, do I need to make a new deck just to change the hero? Um, okay, so I can add and remove with up and down C, but... Okay, I might actually have to make a new deck. Oh! No, you just have to cancel out a little. Okay, so we see that he has fewer hit points. Uh, so a base of HP of... Um... Not 14, 13. Uh, less base attack. Same movement, same tech power. However, um, okay. Ah, okay. 
So when he's using an action card, he still uses either his own range or the weapon's range. Also, I think EXP bonus is a good skill. Yeah, it makes you fill the bonus bar faster. That's what EXP does. So, I mean, he starts out a little worse than Silver, but in a long battle, you'll get more bonus points. And, I mean, fixed range is an interesting ability. And Inolus has more movement range and less attack. And I'm surprised she doesn't have more tech power. However, she has a tech passive. Using tech cards costs one fewer action point. And it also applies if you're casting the tech through an item, like if you have a wand equipped. So, I mean, I can see how that would be a valuable skill. You could cast a bunch of action cards in one turn. <laughs> That's kind of exactly what it says it'll do. Um, okay. Oh! Character restrictions. Forgot about that. So we cannot use large swords as a ranger. That's why it says hunter only. It's not referring to hero side when it says hunter, it's referring to the hunter class. So I guess I add more guns. Um, guards Demolisher. I don't really care about that when I'm fighting arcs. Miner Slayer. Uh, yeah, rifles seem good, ranger only. Good against aerial creatures. I'll add a couple of those. Oh, and I can't even add staffs to the deck. So why are there so many spells in this deck? They're like three. In a 30 card deck, that's like 10% of the deck. Um, yeah, because spells all have a left edge that's yellow, so you need to be able to use yellow. I mean, the hero himself can natively use yellow. I th um, oh, the shot. It's in a T shape. It's awfully happy when we make our deck legal to use. Alright, so that's our deck for next time. And, uh, yeah. See ya!